Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Magneti and today we're going to be talking about the five things you need to know before starting your first playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077. We're going to be covering the five most important things that I think you should know before you start your first playthrough. Let's get into it. Alright now firstly, I want to talk about the character life paths. These are insanely important and they can affect the entirety of the entire game and the way it's played, who you talk to, who you can romance, what your skill sets are, all kinds of stuff. But firstly I want to mention the three different paths you can take, which are Nomad, Street Kid, and corpo or corporate path. Now the exact things that the character life paths can affect aren't exactly known yet as the game hasn't quite launched at the recording of this video. Hopefully it hasn't launched yet at the posting of this video either. But each life path drastically changes the way the game is played. It doesn't only affect how the game is started, but it changes the dialogue options you'll have available, what secondary characters you can romance, what side quests you have at your disposal, along with how the game will actually end. You will also get the chance to change life paths at some point throughout the game, probably somewhere in the middle, but a reward is given to those players who stay on their life path throughout the entirety of the game. And like I said before, overall not much is known exactly to the effect of how your life path will affect the gameplay, you know, other than what I've already mentioned, but in specific, not much is known. Alright, let's start out with the Nomad Path. Choosing the Nomad Path, you'll start out in the Badlands, which surround Night City. You'll have to work hard to earn your keep, and once you get into Night City, you're gonna have to work even harder, because living out in the Badlands does not provide you with a whole lot of moolah. Playing as a Nomad, you tend to have the feeling of an independent neutral, meaning when you interact with other other characters and uh, people throughout Night City, like street thugs or gangs or even corporate overlords, you kind of have more of a neutral dialogue selection and uh, you tend to just be more independent and freedom willed, if that makes sense. Nomads also do not like the bullshit propaganda that the Corpos put out, and you will likely start out with a skill set in equipment and vehicles, so me any mechanic skills or uh, weapons and other types of equipment you will have a better base knowledge in playing as a nomad. Now, as well as all of everything I already mentioned, your dialogue options with any life path you pick, your dialogue options will be buffed in that area, so if you choose the nomad path you will have more dialogue options to talk to with other nomads, whereas if you played as a street kid life, you may not have as many dialogue options with nomads as you would with street kids. Some of your dialogue options as a nomad may even be a little bit awkward when you're talking to higher up like street gangs or thugs and corpos. Moving on to the street kid path, if you choose the street kid path, you will be very quickly shown that loyalty and doing what must be done is the life of a street kid. You'll start off in the neighborhood of Haywood, and you're likely to run around with gangs and begin to control the real underground of Night City. One of the starting missions playing as a street kid is going to be hijacking a high value car that just about everybody in and around Night City has their eyes on. Not that specific ve vehicle, but that type of car engine. And like I said before, having grown up as a street kid, you have many more dialogue options and romance options when talking to gangs, thugs, and other members of the street. Your skill set will be focused in hacking and most likely weaponry. Your main enemy as a street kid is the corpos. Now, if you choose the corporal or the corporate life path, which is probably the life path I'm gonna pick, and I think you might agree with me after I read this description of it, but anyways, getting into it, choosing the corporal life path will set you down right in the middle of climbing the Araska corporate ladder in the counterintelligence division. Now, Araska is one of the many conglomerate-sized corporations that now heavily outweigh any currently existing government, military, etc. Now, out of all the factions in Night City, the most gruesome to the people is the corporations. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, it's a, it's a conglomerate corporation that is much more powerful than any government currently existing in Cyberpunk, and it, it's, not, it's not a good look. They don't treat the people very well, and, you know, propaganda bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, since you're a hard at work employee in the counterintelligence division of the Araska Corporation, you've learned to use information and intelligence to your will and can use the knowledge to manipulate conversation whenever it may be needed. Sometimes, even in different situations, not necessarily specific dialogue, you could use your corporate counterintelligence abilities 
to assist you in life in general. Eventually, if you take the corporal life path, you'll find yourself turning against Araska, which you used to call your home. Surprisingly, I don't know why the fuck you do that, but... Choosing the corporal life path obviously provides you with many more dialogue and romance options with other corpos, but the bad news is you have no experience in the real world of Night City, which is pretty much the majority of Night City, and, uh... Yeah, you're kind of fucked when it comes to, like, handling guns and stuff, but you're, like, super smart. I guess that's kind of why I want to pick this path, because I feel as though myself, as a smart person, and I have no experience with anything else. Anyway, it's not important. Now, one cool thing about picking the Corpo life path is that there is a undisclosed romance option when choosing this life path. Uh, there's not much else out there about it that I, that I know of. You might be able to find something if you go out and search for it, or if you can just wait a few hours for the game to launch. You can find out for yourself and pick the corporal life path. Now, moving on, I kind of dragged that out a little longer than I wanted to. My next main thing that you should know before starting your first playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077 is that side quests affect the main quests. And what I mean by that is that doing side quests won't only increase the length of the game in general, it will also change how the main game will be played out. So, say for example, you play side quest A and there are five different endings to that specific side quest that can affect the main quest and you get option three that will affect the main quest in such a way anything you do out in night city in the real world that it, not anything but anything quest related in night city that you do will almost most certainly affect the main quest line i've even heard stories like i said the game's not out yet so i don't know for sure but apparently, if you do enough side quests or the right side quests, you can even beat the game without playing any of the main quests. Now, along with everything I've already mentioned about completing side quests, you can also increase the level of your character, or V, which is the name of your character. And you can gain romance between secondary characters and learn more about their past by completing side quests. And getting that extra XP and maybe feeling like you know a little bit, little bit about the people you work with might help you complete the main quests. Speaking of side quests, do them, please. I always like to say, play the way you want to play, but make sure you try, at least try a little bit, to stop playing the main quest and play some of the side quests because it will just, it, it'll extremely benefit you, okay? Please, just try a little. Now, the third thing I want to mention before you start your first playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077 is stealth and hacking aren't as obvious as you might think. And what I mean by that is that stealth and hacking skills may be a little more useful even if you're playing a run and kill everything with explosives game style. Now, by getting the stealth and hacking skills early in the game, you can benefit yourself by being able to avoid combat situations, which are extremely difficult in the very early game. And by that, you can maybe, for example, if you go into the hacking skill, you could hack a camera to see around a corner, for example, or hack into somebody's cybernetics and kill them, or connect through to other people, etc., etc. And that might be able to help you out in the beginning of the game, where your um, combat skills are not as adept as they may be farther along in the game. Now, like I said, you can play how you want. So if you want to go in guns a blazing, go for it. That's up to you. Now, my fourth thing that I want you to know is that Night City and the entire game map itself is probably a lot bigger than you think. You may have heard people complaining about how small it is, comparing it to GTA 5 or things like Skyrim, etc. Now, the thing about Night City is that you gotta, you gotta think about it. It's in 2077, right? Now, I don't know if you're into sci-fi movies, but I definitely am. I love sci-fi. And if you think about it, in sci-fi movies, it, it's layered. You know, uh, one building, almost every building in the game is probably going to be like 10 levels high. Each level is probably going to be explorable. Maybe not every room on every level, but at least every level of probably every building will be explorable. You could walk around, and even if you, if you go out to the outskirts of the map, places that you don't think anybody would be, those might be the places that you find the rarest item in the game, or a cool-ass hideout, or a, uh, a whole different mini-gang that you can do a whole side quest for under a tunnel in a rat hole. You, you never know. This game, it'll, once you get into it, I'm, I'm 100% sure, and you can dislike this video and unsubscribe to me if you are subscribed that if you get into this game and you are not surprised by how big it is, I, I, you can you, you can just 
come blame me, because I, I gave you too much hope. But in my opinion, at least, I think that this map is going to be massive, just fucking ginormous. And the last thing I want to talk to you about before you start your first playthrough of this game is that for the true immersion obsessors and myself, there is endless loot! Endless. This game is endless in general, I feel like. Holy shit. So, endless loot. Alright, now, there's almost an endless supply of loot things to do. You can romance secondary players, hire hookers, do drugs. You might even be able to romance hookers that are on drugs while you're on drugs. Who knows? I don't know, because I haven't played. Somebody else that's played for 40 hours might know. Anyways, the main point here is that you let your looty... <coughs> excuse me, immersive mind go crazy. Night City is an amazing place, so are the Badlands, kinda, maybe, if you choose that, you know, life path to be a nomad. So go out, explore, blow shit up, hack cars, kill people, die, do drugs, and side quests, please, do side quests. Build your skill tree how you want, go live the life you wanna live in Night City. I'm excited for Cyberpunk 2077, if you are, go ahead and leave me a subscribe for more videos like this. And if you really want to motivate me, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I hope you got value out of it. I will see you in the next one. Peace!